Chapter 14 of Old Granny Fox by Thornton W. Burgess. Chapter 14, Three Vain and Foolish Wishes. There's nothing so foolishly silly and vain as to wish for a thing you can never attain. Old Granny Fox. We all know that. Yet most of us are just foolish enough to make such a wish now and then. I guess I have done it. I guess you have done it. Peter Rabbit has done it, often, and then laughed at himself afterwards. I suspect that even shrewd, clever Granny Fox has been guilty of it more than once. So it's not surprising that Reddy Fox, terribly hungry as he was, should do a little foolish wishing. When he left home to go to the old pasture in the hope that he would be able to find something to eat there, he started off bravely. It was cold, very cold indeed, but his fur coat kept him warm as long as he was moving. The green meadows were glistening white with snow. All the world or at least all of the part of it with which Reddy was acquainted, was white. It was beautiful, very beautiful. Millions of sparkles flashed in the sun. But Reddy had no thought for beauty. The only thought he had room for was to get something to put in his stomach for himself and for Granny Fox. Jack Frost had hardened the snow so that Reddy no longer had to wade through it. He could run on the crust now without breaking through, and this made it much easier. So he trotted along swiftly. He had intended to go straight to the old pasture, but there suddenly popped into his head a memory of the shelter down in the far corner of the old orchard which Farmer Brown's boy had built for Bob White. Probably the Bob White family were there now, and he might surprise them. He would go there first. Reddy stopped and looked carefully to make sure that Farmer Brown's boy and Bowser the Hound were nowhere in sight and then he ran swiftly towards the old orchard. Just as he entered it, he heard a merry voice just over his head. Dee, 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 dee. Reddy stopped and looked up. There was Tommy Tit the Chickadee, clinging tightly to a big piece of fresh suet tied fast to a branch of a tree. And Tommy was stuffing himself. Reddy sat right down underneath that suet and looked up longingly. The sight of it made his mouth water. It was almost more than he could stand. He jumped once. He jumped twice. He jumped three times. But all his jumping was in vain. That suet was just out of reach. There was no possible way of reaching it to save by flying or by climbing. Reddy's tongue hung out of his mouth with longing. I wish I could climb, said Reddy. But he couldn't climb and all the wishing in the world wouldn't enable him to. He w knew this very well. So after a little, he started on, and he drew near the far corner of the old orchard. He saw Bob White and Mrs. White, and all the young Bobs picking up grain, which Farmer Bo Brown's boy had scattered for them just in front of the shelter he had built for them. Reddy crouched down and very slowly, inch by inch at a time, he crept forward, his eyes shining with eagerness. 
Just as he was almost within springing distance, Bob White gave a signal and away flew the Bob Whites to the safety of the hemlock tree on the edge of the green forest. Tears of rage and disappointment welled up in Reddy's eyes. I wish I could fly, he muttered as he watched the brown birds disappear in the big hemlock tree. This was quite as foolish a wish as the other, as Reddy tr so Reddy trotted on and decided to go down past the smiling pond. When he got there, he found it, as he had expected, frozen over. But just where the laughing brook joins it, there was a little place where there was an there was open water. Billy Mink was on the ice at the edge, and just as Reddy got there, Billy dived in. A minute later, he climbed out with a fish in his mouth. Give me a bite, begged Reddy. Catch your own fish, retorted Billy Mink. I have worked hard enough for what I get as it is. Reddy was afraid to go out on the ice where Billy was, and so he sat and watched him eat that fine fish. Then Billy dived into the water again and disappeared. Reddy waited a long time, but Billy did not return. Wish I could dive, gulped Reddy, thinking of the fine fish somewhere underneath that ice. But this wish was quite as foolish as the other wishes.